Welcome back. It is game four of the NBA Finals. The Denver Nuggets back in Miami where you see the Heat trying to even up the series. I got three picks coming your way. But first off, let's recap how we did in game three. Our second straight winning day, a two and one day. Hey, we'll take that. We had Jamal Murray's over 24 and a half points. He gets it done with 34 points. We had the bankroll builder that same game parlay for plus 101 odds. That was pretty easy, although Bam made a sweat at the end of the game. And when Michael Porter Jr. was our one loser, he did not get it done. Has been a weird series for MPJ. He's, I'll let you know right now, we're not betting an MPJ prop today. Yeah, it probably goes over today because that's just how it works. But either way, let's dive into today's picks. And first off, I do want to talk about how, what we talked about in Game Three's video. Underdog Fantasy, one of our trusted sponsors here. They got a free square, and I want you guys to take advantage of it. It's for Jimmy Butler to score one point. He doesn't have to score 25, just one. And it's a free square. So take advantage of it. The max you can put on it is $20. And a reminder, if you are new to uh, Underdog Fantasy, make sure you sign up with our code COS or just click the top link in the description. You get a 100% deposit match. So they're going to double your first deposit up to 100 bucks. So take advantage of that. Here's all the states that Underdog is available available and just make sure you have pick them in your state and boom you can use that jimmy butler free square you can get that deposit match so take advantage of it I'll, I'll talk about how i'm using it at the end of the video but again we love underdog here we're gonna have plenty more underdog fantasy parlay so make sure you get in when you're new now let's dive into our favorite pick though we got one player prop two bankroll builders the player prop is going to be this guy gabe vincent over 12 and a half points minus 113 on fan build now I honestly would be very surprised if this line somehow went to 13 and a half. So you should be able to tail it at 12 and a half up to tip off. I would play this to right around minus 125, maybe minus 130 if you're feeling like laying some juice. But I think this line's going to stay at 12 and a half pretty much all day long going into the Friday night game. Now, let's talk about Gabe Vincent so far this series because, you know, he's on an honestly, arguably all close season. This guy's been really good for him. He's going to earn himself a big payday in the offseason. But let's look at him so far this series in the NBA Finals. Game one. 19.7 of 14 shooting, 38 minutes played. Yeah, he played a lot of minutes. Game two, 23 points, 8 of 12 from the field, 32 minutes. Then you look at game three, only seven points, two for 10 from the field, 32 minutes. Now, it's something you have to love. Consistent field goal attempts and consistent minutes. There's nothing more that you can ask for when you're taking an over. You need a guy out there and you need a guy shooting the ball. Now, well, I am not going to guarantee Gabe Vincent not only plays 30 minutes today, and two, he shoots 10 or more times. I can't guarantee that. It's Eric Spolster. He's one of the guys that always messes with his uh, lineups, but I do think Vincent's played as well, played himself into a very solid role for this Heat team, and I don't anticipate them going away from him in game four. Now, let's talk about games one and two. Vincent obviously crushed this line. Game three, everything went wrong. Obviously, shot two for 10 from the field. Got some, honestly, garbage foul calls. One where Aaron Gordon just trucked him. Another one where he got a steal on Jokic, but they called a foul on him. Two foul calls that really weren't good, took him out of the rhythm, took him out of the first half of the game. And so, yeah, he just never got into rhythm, never really had anything going for him. So I think he bounces back here. I mean, you should look at game three. We saw Adebayo shoot 21 times. Jimmy Butler shoot 24 times. Look, I'm letting you know right now, if the Heat see 20-plus field goal attempts from Adebayo and Jimmy Butler, they're probably going to lose more often than not. That's just, and while I like Adebayo, I think he's very talented. We're going to talk about him in a little bit. But I like Jimmy Butler, obviously very talented. They, this Heat team did not get to the finals without with this these two guys carrying them. Now you could look at the other side of the court. Jokic and Murray have just been carrying this uh Nuggets team, although you could the Nuggets supporting cast always has someone stepping up. Christian Brown was the last guy. But still they need their supporting cast to step up and I anticipate them trying to get them going, whether that's Max Drews and hopefully Gabe Vincent. Now you look at Vincent so far this postseason when he's played 30 or more minutes, which he's done in 13 games this year. Well this postseason scored 13 points in nine of those 13. So when he plays minutes he scores points. When he's attempted 10 or more field goal attempts, well, done the same thing. Scored 13 or more points in 9 of 13. Now, you might be thinking, does have to be the same games when he's played 30 minutes and attempted 10 shots? Actually, no. That's actually not. He had several games where he's played 30 minutes and not attempted 10 shots. Several games where he's played less than 10, 30 minutes but attempted 10 shots. But so far this postseason, eight games with 30 minutes played and 10 plus field goal attempts. He's over in seven of eight games, including two of three this series. The one miss all postseason was that game three. So I think he's played himself into a good role here. I really like Gabe Vincent in this game. Bounce back. He's a role player at home. Normally they play particularly well. Also worth noting, Kyle Lowry, no, don't know the status of his injury. Obviously, he kind of tweaked, looked like his hamstring at the end of game three. While I'm sure that Kyle Lowry plays a lot of minutes here, I still would rather take Gabe Vincent. And we don't necessarily know Kyle Lowry is going to play a lot of minutes. So give me Gabe Vincent. Give me his over 12 and a half points to my first play of the day. Now, for my last two plays, they're going to be a little bit different. They're going to be the bankroll builders, the same game parlays. Well, everyone can't tail these. At least I want to talk about and give you my thoughts on how this game kind of goes. And then you can maybe use that to whether you're going to bet regular player props or you're going to bet whatever on prize picks, sleeper, underdog fantasy, whatever you name it. I want to talk about these two bankroll builders. You can kind of gauge how I see this game going. Now, let's move into this one. We're going to have one for the Nuggets, one for the Heat. We're going to start with the Nuggets edition. And let's talk about these five legs. If you combine them all in the same game parlay on Fandle, you get plus. 
plus 114. It's a five leg same game parlay. We'll put one unit on it to win 1.14. Now you see a bunch of legs. We let's dissect them real quick. And before you say, Austin, I'm on FanDuel. I only have four, six, and eight, 10. I can't. Just go down to alt over two and a half rebounds. You can take Jamal Murray at three. If you're on Aaron Gordon, you can take him over seven and a half points. You should have all the alternate lines. If you're on DraftKings, you should be able to tail all of these legs, except for Jamal Murray's under 34 and a half points. You, I don't mind taking this over 18 plus points on DraftKings. However, one of my individual leans, which we'll talk about on Underdog Fantasy in a little bit, I don't think this is a big Jamal Murray game. If you're doing a little bit of line reading towards these lines, Jamal Murray, obviously, we took his over in game three. It was 24 and a half, kind of went up to 25 and a half closer to tip off. He obviously crushed it. And then they didn't even move his line at all, where you saw Jokic's line go up a lot. So I think this is a bad Jamal Murray, not a bad Jamal Murray game. But if I'm the Heat, how, what did we have success in game two? We tracked Jamal Murray from the jump. They let him get going in game three. He obviously kind of scored 20 points in the first half. They started to double team, obviously, towards the second quarter, but obviously he was already going. He was in rhythm. I think they double him from the jump, and I think Jamal Murray struggles scoring because that's why I'm on all these five legs. But let's dive into him a little bit more. Now, let's talk about Jamal Murray. He is under this 34 and a half points in all three games so far this series, and it's in noted that this parlay is, in fact, 3-0 this series. So, But let's talk about each and every uh, game, and let's talk about these revs and assists for Jamal Murray. Now, you look at three-plus rebounds for what we need. He's done that in all 18 playoff games. I did not mind him for four-plus rebounds. If he had to take four, I'm okay there. But three-plus feels like a safe number, obviously coming off the triple-double, but I don't see him getting a triple-double again here. He also has six-plus assists in 10 of 18, but obviously the assists are up big time here. 10-plus assists in all three games this, this, this series, and he's averaged 18 potential assists. Like I said, I anticipate him getting doubled a whole lot in this game, and obviously the assist chances should, should go up in that situation. Murray, under 34.5 points in 14 of 18 games. So those are the three things we need from Jamal Murray. We need him not to score a lot of points, grab a couple rebounds, and get a couple assists. I think he certainly do that. I know this Miami Heat defense is one of the best in the league. Murray, obviously a scary guy to fade. Not like we're fading him at his 25 and a half points line in this same game parlay. I'll give you a hint. We're probably fading him and that in a little bit. But I think Miami makes adjustments to try to slow him down. Now, let's talk about going along with the Murray's under. You're going to need someone else to score. And Jokic, 25 plus points is the next one we're looking at. Now, Jokic, obviously, he's done this in 13 of 18 postseason games, including 32, 41, and 27 points so far this series. When you see Jamal Murray getting doubled, Jokic is that guy that they throw the ball to. We've seen when the Heat have won this series, they let Jokic shoot 28 times. So I'm not saying turn Jokic into a score. No, that's and that's what I'm saying. But they will make Jokic, and he'll be put in advantageous spots. I think they know Jokic is going to get his regardless of if they double him or not. This is Nikola Jokic. He's going to do his thing. Is that obviously, you know, back a two-time MVP for a reason. I think he gets us 25 plus barring foul trouble. And then the last like Aaron Gordon, eight plus points. I don't mind his alt under 16 and a half, but eight plus points in 17 of 18 playoff games. While he's had 16, 12 and 11 this series, I expect him to play, you know, 33, 36, 40 minutes tonight. And he's needed for defense. He's going to be out there. He'll get his mismatches down low. I think he can get you eight points. Might miss a couple free throws in there, but I think he can get you eight points. So you combine all five of those legs. I know it's a weirder one yeah it's plus 114 i think we got a good chance of hitting back to back bankroll builders and maybe we can hit three in a row because that kind of naturally segues into our heat edition one and if you want to combine both of these together you get plus 400 on band you can go crazy if you're feeling spicy but let's start with the one for the heat because this is only going to involve two heat players and really a lot on one guy's shoulders let's talk about these legs and it's another different one a little different from what we have been doing but i really like this one that we got jimmy butler four plus assists Bam out about two plus assists. Bam out about eight plus rebounds. Bam out about 15 plus points. Bam out about under 26 and a half points. Currently plus 121 on FanDuel, risking one unit to win 1.21. Now, yes, you read, read that correctly on the screen. It might seem idiotic to take a guy to score 15 plus points and then also under 26 and a half points. But if you're looking for the best sweat in the world, it's not only to get to root for a guy to score points, also root for him to not score points. But realistically, if you guys are an OG fan of mine, you know I did some science experiments last year where we tried to target guys that were very consistent. And I like the matchup for Bam. However, it is worth noting, he is under 26 and a half points in every single playoff game, all 21. Look, tip of the cap if Mr. Bam out of Al wants to go ruin this one because he scores 27 points. I just don't see the heat winning when they got Bam Adebayo having to carry the offense. It's just not their recipe for success. However, I think he gets you 15 plus points. It's a great matchup for him. I just don't think he shoots a ton. It's rare that he shoots 21 plus times in back-to-back -back games. So I think it's a 15 points, but I also think he goes under 26 and a half. Big wiggle room here. You're basically banking on 
the book's being sharp, right? I mean, we're not asking, you know, when you think about standard vary, standard deviation, variance, you basically, we know the lines are super sharp. So we're telling Vegas, hey, just be a little bit sharp with your lines. And Bam's going to finish right in the middle there, right in the sweet spot. Now, obviously getting out of Bam. And let's talk to the other legs, though. Jimmy Butler, four plus assists in 17 of 20 playoff games. He's at seven, nine, and four this series. 13, yes, 13 potential assists in game three. Obviously only connected on four of them. I think he connects more. I think his teammates is obviously, Jimmy Butler got a lot of open looks that he normally knocks down, missed some of those, but still going to get his teammates involved. I'm trusting him to get four plus assists. Now, the next one, Bam Adebayo to get us two or plus assists. We obviously need that. He's done that in 17 of 21 playoff games. He's at five, four, and three so far this series. At about eight plus rebounds in 18 of 21 playoff games, including 13, nine, and 17 so far this series. I know it looks this one, if I'm going to pull back, you now the rebounds could be sus for Mr. Bam Adebayo, but I think he grabs eight. And obviously, he's not grabbing 17 again. That ain't happening. But I think he get you eight rebounds being out there for 40 minutes. We know they hardly sub him out. We know that because we almost got burned by him. But either way, I look at these legs. I know it's weird, but this is 3-0, this this uh, NBA Finals. Hopefully, it goes to 4-0. and If you want to parlay it with the first one, you certainly can on FanDuel. You should be able to tail different legs here. Obviously, people on DraftKings probably can't take the under 26 and a half, but you can just remove it. The other legs should be probably less than, you know, plus value, but... So you can tail it there or maybe add in a leg from the previous one that you like as well. But either way, those two bankroll builders. And then we got Gabe Vincent over in points. And that naturally, last but well, not least, we're going to the Underdog Fantasy Entry. Let's talk about it. A reminder, if you are new to Underdog, make sure you use code COS or the top link in the description when you sign up. Let's get into it real quick. Get on out of here. The first leg, Jamal Murray, Murray lower than 25 and a half points. Jimmy Butler higher than 0 0.5 points. The free square. And Gabe Vincent higher than 12 and a half points. We're risking $20, the max you can put on the Jimmy Butler free square to win 120. I like our chances here. Obviously, we talked about Gabe Vincent. Jimmy Butler, he's scoring one point. Last one will be Jamal Murray, lower than 25 and a half points. I know it's sketchy. If you want, you put your favorite player prop in there, maybe combine it with my Gabe Vincent one, or just use the Jimmy Butler free square in however way you want to. I just don't think it's a big Jimmy uh, Jamal Murray game. Obviously, I've been wrong before, but I uh, gun to my head. I think this is a low. I think this is a Jokic, you know, 35, 40 point game. I think Jamal Murray maybe cracks like 20, 21, 22 points, but I don't see him score 26. But either way, we'll see how it goes. Let's cash the two bankroll builders, cash the underdog fantasy entry, and cash Gabe Vincent's over. Have a great Friday. Have a great game four. And I'll be back again Sunday night for Monday's video, which will be game five, which could be the final game of the NBA season. Hopefully not. Hopefully we can even it up. So we got some more videos. Love you guys. Have a great Friday. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.